Good evening, and welcome to the program. On tonight's instalment of Snake Oil Salesman Sells, we shall be guiding you towards the prospect of more money and more time. It's alive! Currently, we live in a post-COVID age, in which the rich have gotten far more of the financial pie than most, where war and climate denial seem starkly on the rise and the youths are barraged by the addictive hassle of social media retorting at them a dystopian future in the making. Purse strings are becoming increasingly tighter, constructs of brick and mortar cost far more than they ever realistically should, and the duopolies of Coles and Woolies, despite record profits, continue to strangle even more subsistence out of us. It is into this situation that I have come. Now the subject of our concern is one that dates all the way back to the invention of money itself. 1971. Many on this platform would claim, not unlike myself, that they hold a pennywise secret, but unlike them or their sponsors, I hold the true answer. And you can trust me, because unlike my competition, I have a reputation to uphold, for I sell snake oil. Now, I could do what the mainstream media does, and go over rather shallow and frankly obvious ways one might save time and therefore money. These include going to bed fully clothed. Don't waste time making one's bed. Leave your shower on always, as turning taps on and off is not only hard, like using a car indicator, but because you're a house sitter. So what do you care? You're not footing the bill. Flush the toilet sparingly. Shit outside. Save toilet paper by jumping into your active shower. Budget meals. Have ready-made meals. Don't fix things when they break. Yeah, don't worry about it, mate. She'll be right. Limit how much you go out each week. But if you must, consider getting pissed beforehand. Because a bar drink is frankly a rip-off. Stop buying consumerist junk. Etc. Etc. But you see, I feel as though my YouTube community is a smidge more enlightened than those who slavishly scoop up the propaganda reel. So, here are some real ways, some esoteric ways, in which you can save time and money. Number one. To begin, the easiest way to save both time and money is simple. If you don't spend money, you therefore save money. But how then does one pay for the necessities of life? Rent, food, Netflix, OnlyFans? The answer is simple. Why work when you can take up the lucrative trade of the pickpocket? If, however, you find yourself disagreeing with the vagabond lifestyle, as it could well be below your moral sensibilities, I have an ethically satisfying solution for your constitution. Since time is money and work makes money, the easiest way to combat your need for work while retaining your virtues is by employing someone to do the work for you. But that costs money. And if you're like myself, and you do not own the means of production, there is one simple solution. Sorry, what? <laughs> no, 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 not violent revolution. No, 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 no. The answer is adolescent slaves, of course. Number two. Child laborers are known to be hardworking servants. No matter the age, just ask this motherfucker. They are the perfect workers, as they are young, obedient, they learn fast, and have a low upkeep cost, requiring minimal sustenance, clothing, shelter, and subsistence. Child employees have the potential to not only save, but also make you bucket loads of money, all the while gratifying your mature and modern sensibilities. Number three. Next, you could consider unconsciousing yourself permanently. <laughs> now, we have a lot of fun on the cooking show here. Perhaps more fun than we should. But in saying that, everything we do on the cooking show is it's all lies. It's just joking. So, please, with whatever I've said, if I have offended you, just take what I've said with a grain of salt. Alright? Joking. We're here for fun. Fun shows. Fun, family-friendly show. Now that being said, enjoy the rest of your program. This one might seem slightly 
controversial, but hear me out. If one, in game, did decide to do a self-imposed euthanasia, you will A. Save money, for you are no longer required to satisfy your material needs, nor any levies to worry about. And B. Time, for you shall no longer be subject to the notion of time, pushing you towards the eternal ecstasy of the afterlife. Though this one is dependent on an afterlife, and being accepted into heaven. So like, don't blame me if this one ends up backfiring? Number 4 If not intentionally unlifing yourself, you could instead do a fight club, i.e. topple the financial system. This one, though, does depend on the political circles one finds himself in, and one might feel more anodyne towards this notion than the last. On the whole, this option has far less short-term benefits, and this will more often not save you time and money in the long run. You could go about this in many ways. An example being, and my personal favourite of course, Marxist revolution. It'll take years of recruitment, preaching, lobbying, the retarding of education, which funnily enough is already happening, a sharp economic downturn, and finally, some internal purges. Once these conditions have been met, a Marxist revolution will be possible. And if possible, you should position yourself in, or at least near, the leading inner circle. Once the revolution smashed the old system aside, and following a limited dictatorship, <laughs> communism shall be reached, and the financial system abolished. There is only one problem with our thought experiment, and that is that you'll be perpetually hard at work, as you live in a communist country now. Number 5! Finally, we could, though it would be a tad harder than our last suggestion, would be to destroy time itself. This would necessitate knowledge far beyond current human understanding, but that could be just a matter of time. <laughs> now, assuming you could climb atop the Tower of Babel and gain the knowledge of the gods, destroying time would, in effect, give you infinite time. This seems like a contradiction, but it is not. If time ceases to exist, the notion of age ceases to exist with it, and you will become immortal. The problem with this approach is that everything will be ageless, which means biological entities will no longer age, and you therefore could grow no crops, nor livestock, nor reproduce, and I imagine the sun would stop turning and the earth would stop turning, and I imagine a whole lot of other cataclysmic-like consequences would follow. But you'd be immortal, and that's pretty neat. Though, I wonder if the rest of humanity would praise or condemn your impositioning a changeless world on them. Food for thought. 